This is particle filters for people in a hurry. In this video, I'll show you a simple simulation that I made in order to sort of walk you through particle filters and show you how they are applied to robot localization, a fundamental problem in autonomous systems. The full source code of this project is linked in the description box below, so feel free to download it, experiment with it, and see how these ideas work in action. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on more exciting content. Now, without any further ado, let's begin. Imagine a robot moving through a room, trying to figure out where it is using sensors like cameras or LiDAR. The challenge here is that no sensor is perfect. Real-world limitations like random noise, systematic errors, and delays make the data unreliable and inconsistent. Without a way to handle this uncertainty, the robot would quickly lose track of its position or make errors like misjudging distances. This is why we need filters, to process the noisy, imperfect data and make reliable estimates about the robot's true location. This is where particle filters come in. Instead of assuming a single precise position for the robot, a particle filter represents many possible positions, called particles. Each particle is a guess about where the robot might be. As the robot moves and collects sensor data, the filter evaluates these guesses. Particles that match the sensor data are given more weight, while others are discarded. Over time, the particles cluster around the robot's most likely position, refining its estimate even in the face of noisy or uncertain data. Think of it like a group of scouts spreading out to search for a hidden treasure. As they gather clues, the scouts eliminate wrong paths and focus on areas most likely to contain the treasure. Similarly, particle filters allow robots to narrow down their location by using evidence from sensors and motion. What we have here is a simulation made using Python, a differential drive robot equipped with a 360 degrees LiDAR sensor. It's navigating through an unknown environment. As you can see, the robot's LiDAR is actively scanning its surroundings, sending out laser beams in all directions to detect nearby obstacles. Let's see what happens as I move the robot. Right now, the particles are tightly clustered around the robot's true position because we're in a feature-rich area. Plenty of obstacles for the LiDAR to detect, giving the particle filters lots of information to work with. But now, watch closely as I guide the robot into this area with fewer obstacles. Notice what happens to the particles. They start to scatter and the estimation gets completely lost. This is because in areas with no distinct features, the LiDAR doesn't provide enough meaningful data for the filters to work with. All the simulated measurements look equally likely, so the filter can't confidently pinpoint the robot's location. For now, let's move back to a more feature-rich area and see how the particles recover. Watch, they'll begin to cluster, to cluster again as the robots gather more useful data. Alright, let's pop open this code and see how it all works. First, we start by initializing our particles, just a bunch of guesses uh, about where the robot might be, each with an equal weight. Then, as the robot moves, we update the particles' positions based on a simple motion model. Just a few lines of code to add some noise to the simulated real-world uncertainty. Next comes the sensor update. Here, we compare what each particle predicts the robot sensor should read against the actual measurements. Particles that make good predictions get higher weights. Those that don't get lower weights. Finally, we have the resampling step. This part takes our weighted set of particles and draws a new set, favoring the ones that fit the data best. 
It's just a neat little algorithm, often half a dozen lines of code, that ensures we keep good particles and discard bad ones. Because it's all broken into separate functions for motion, sensing, and resampling, you can easily tweak things to experiment or improve accuracy. The code might look uh, simple, but it's got all the fundamentals you need to understand and implement a particle filter in your own projects. If you are curious to try it yourself, the entire code is uh, available in the description. Feel free to download it, play around and maybe even extend it. For instance, you could add different motion models or improve the way we handle low feature areas like the ones we just saw. The code is great starting point for anyone looking to dive into particle filters. So this is the end of this video, but if you like the video, make sure to um, subscribe to the channel to see more content and I'll see you again with a new idea.